This past fall, about 100 members of Mount Tabor United Methodist Church participated in a book study connected to a sermon series addressing issues of racial justice and reconciliation. We used Latasha Morrison's book, Be the Bridge, Pursuing God's Heart for Racial Reconciliation. Through this series, we learned about, acknowledged, and lamented the truth of serious racial injustices, both past and present. Our hearts were called and inspired based on Christian teaching to repent and to become a force for racial justice and reconciliation in our community. The study was enlightening and convicting and left many of us yearning to do more to build on what we learned. Toward that end, and in celebration of Black History Month, we are offering Building Bridges, a video series in which participants from the fall study will share things that they learned or something that they have been inspired to do as a result of the study. Videos are posted each Wednesday. Whether you participated in the fall study or not, whether you are simply curious to learn more, or whether you are ready to jump into the work of racial justice and reconciliation, we hope you will find these videos helpful. Today I've invited Thor Jensen and Marjorie Guilford here to share a little bit about their experience with the Be the Bridge study and sermon series. Thank you for talking to me today, Thor and Marjorie. Could we start by just having you introduce yourself briefly? Thor, do you want to go first? Sure thing. Um, my name is Thor Jensen. I've been a um, been at Mount Tabor since the early 2000s. Um, we came, my wife and I came when our oldest son was just two or three years old. So we've been longtime members. Um, and I did the Be the Bridge study as part of my class, my Sunday school class, the foundations class. And I also participated in a Be the Bridge group that I found on Facebook. Hmm. And it was a, it was, um, there was about 10 of us um, spread out through North Carolina. Um, and I just finished that about a month ago. So I kind of did something in addition to um, the study in Sunday school class and the sermon series. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you. Marjorie. Um, my name is Marjorie Guilford and I've been a member of Mount Tabor for about eight years. Um, I'm in the Summit Study School class, and we study Be the Bridge um, in that class. And there were lots of takeaways that I have. Um, so I want to share one or two of those with you today. Okay. Well, why don't we start right there? Marjorie, what are one or two takeaways that have stuck with you from the study that you'd like to share? Um, I think one of the things that after I really actually am rereading the book now, but one of the things that I thought was incredibly important was to understand the background so that we don't start at what is today, but what is the history of African Americans in this country. And there are several places in the book where the author talks about that, where Latasha talks about that. Um, for example, how her grandfather treated her mother. Um, and I think it's just really important for us to understand that and to know we're not starting with today and where things are. We all have a past and we all have a history and that influences how we live and how we you know, make friends and think about things. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, Thor? What's yeah, um, you know, I, I took so much away from um, the Be the Bridge study. You know, one thing was that um, it encourages you to, to, to uh, research and find out about, you know, particular events that happened in the past that are examples of, you know, the racial issues that happened. And a couple things really stood out. One was um, that there, there was a public golf course in Greensboro called Galepsi that was whites only, uh, paid for with city taxes. And then in the 60s, the city was forced to open it to everybody. Um, blacks included, who were already paying taxes to fund it. Um, so they decided to just close the course and use it for storage of machinery and equipment rather than let black people play there. Um, and another thing I learned about was the there were some riots in Wilmington in the early 1900s where whites basically came in and by force took 
possession of things, of property from the black community. Um, and it just blew me away that these things could happen and that there's really no ramifications for that kind of thing. It's just the history of these events um, that I never would have found out about if I hadn't done the study. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it, it's amazing how many of those stories don't make it into our schools or no. other conversations about. So learning about history as you both have just spoken to is a powerful part of what Be the Bridge, what the book does. So thanks for sharing those examples. So has being a part of the study, the sermon series, has, have those things led you to either take some action or hope to take action that you might not have done otherwise with respect to promoting racial reconciliation or racial justice? Let's start with Thor this time. Yeah, one, one thing I learned just from doing so much research and learning so much is that I'm, I'm a lot more confident when, when I need to call somebody out, when somebody says that, oh, things weren't really that bad or they're not really that bad today, is um, now I have information that I can give them to say, here, here's this article that talks about how you know, the GI Bill didn't apply to, to Black people. The, here's you know about you know the um, Fair Lending Act didn't apply to African Americans. Mm -hmm. You know that I can show them an article mm -hmm. about it. Um, I just feel more confident in in doing that. Mm -hmm. More more concrete examples of how discrimination and injustice has continued after slavery. It didn't end there, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. Marjorie. Well, I plan to have a be the bridge group. I've talked to Deborah Daniels about it and, and I agree with her. We need to wait until after COVID-19 is over. And um, I've asked some friends who are within our church and some who are not, um, you know, if they wanted to participate in it. Um, it's something that I feel pretty comfortable in doing. At one point in my life for a few years, I worked for an all black company, except there was one other white person there. So, um, you know, I feel like I have a lot of things to, you know, pull from, from that. And a lot of stories that I could tell, you know, that, that absolutely show the prejudice that was very recent. I mean, that was probably 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and to understand, having had conversations with people I worked with after I'd been there for a while and they really trusted me about how they felt. So for anybody listening to this video that doesn't know what a Be The Bridge group is differently than the Be The Bridge study group that we did, could you just briefly say what you mean by you want to be in a Be The Bridge group? Well, my goal is to have about five or 10 um, African-Americans and the exactly the same number of um, Caucasian people. Mm -hmm. And to start off to begin with by just really getting to know each other, you know, talking about all these things, but um, also with the goal and, and stating that to begin with that um, we want to work, I want to work through um, some issues that we all have and, um, and current issues as well as the past, depending on what people want to do and um, to really talk about um, the difference that things are not equal, still are not equal today, mm -hmm. you know, and um, okay. anyway, that's, that's kind of the way I planned it, you know, I mean, I'm going to have something more written than that, you know, and something a little more detailed, but that, that's my overall plan. So that's great, and I, I guess I would just add a little bit to that for, again, listeners who might not be familiar with it, that be the Bridge is a national organization and they sponsor these kinds of groups all around the country. Um, mm -hmm. And so Marjorie's, I think, speaking to creating one here locally to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And Thor, before we started recording, you mentioned that you had already joined an additional Be the Bridge group yep. virtually. Do you wanna say anything about that? Cause that sounds to me like a concrete action you took in response to this study. Yeah, it was really, um... It's, it's just a Facebook group that you join 
-hmm. and there's there's individuals that are the I guess the facilitators and they post articles and they make comments and as a as a participant you're not allowed to comment back mm -hmm. which means you just you just read you sit back and you listen and you learn um you know and you you don't have to you don't you're not supposed to respond you're just supposed to take it all in um and if it was a if it was a a live class it would be the same thing. You just you just sit there and take it in. Mm -hmm. um, and what's liberating about that is you feel like you don't have to try to defend yourself. You don't have to try to sway them or let them know that well you're not like all those other people. You're just you're just learning. Um, and then after a certain period of time, and you've taken some of the extra courses and information, um, then you can start responding to it. Right. So it's yeah. been really helpful just to just to get more information and in, in more examples from other people yeah. about how all this works out. Yeah, good. I'm glad you mentioned that. I actually have been making my way through that as well. And it's just a rich trove of resources. And there's, there's some, okay, before we close things up, is there anything else either of you would like to share about this study, about your thinking at this point or the impact being part of Be The Bridge study had on you. And we'll start with Thor, I guess, this time. Well, one thing I would say is that, um, you know, I always saw myself as somebody who, you know, I was, I, you know, I treated everybody the same. Um, and one thing that I learned from the Be The Bridge study is that I was doing things that, that really made people of other races uncomfortable. I didn't intend to do it, but mm -hmm. just the way I may have said things to them or the types of questions I asked, I would make them feel uncomfortable. So, um, so that's something that I, I took away from the study. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I think pretty much um, most of at least from the time that the schools were integrated in North Carolina, I've tried to make it a point to make friends that were African-American. And um, just doing that and talking with people and building that kind of trust um, has helped me to learn a lot of things that I would not have known otherwise. Okay. Well, thanks to both of you for being willing to talk to me today. I really appreciate what you shared and know it will be helpful and interesting to those who listen. Thanks for taking the time to listen in today. We hope you found a bit of inspiration to continue learning and perhaps to partner with us at Mount Tabor as we seek to truly love our neighbors as ourselves and to be a force for equality, justice, and peace in our churches, our community, our nation, and our world. We welcome all who feel called to learn, grow, and make a difference to join with us. Please email us at the email on your screen, gray.handwork at mounttaborumc.org with your ideas or to express interest in getting involved.